Okay, so this question, I could literally do a 90-minute oral presentation on all of the fancy and fun microbiology, okay? I'm going to try to stay as concise as possible, but also give you some high-yield value points. So you look at the image here and you say, no idea what I'm fucking looking at, okay? Uh, I'll come back to the image in a second because even if you don't know what you're looking at, the vignette... Uh, alone is sufficient to extract the diagnosis. We have a 42-year-old man from rural India. He has a cavitary mass in the right upper lobe of the lungs, and that's referring to previous history of tuberculosis. NBME exams love rural India and Albania as two endemic locations for TB. That's what I've observed on the NBME. So we have a guy from rural India has a cavitary uh, mass in the right upper lobe of the lungs. Even after TB has been fully slash successfully treated, it can leave residual cavitary lesions. And then aspergillus likes to subsequently occupy these lesions, causing an aspergilloma or fungus ball. Uh, the NBME exam slash USMLE might tell you the patient has HIV, they're immunocompromised. Doesn't really matter. Uh, what, what does matter is that the patient has a cavitary lesion period could be from a prior pulmonary abscess, okay, not TB related, but the fact that we have TB tells us that I'm like smelling something right now and I'm just like, it's a neighbor cooking food and I thought there was like something burning, um, but no, there's just a neighbor fucking cooking food. Okay, anyway, I'm like, is my computer on fire? Like what the fuck's happening here? So anyway, uh, but uh, whether it's TB causing a cavitary lesion or whether it's just history of abscess, uh, then, uh, that is conducive for an aspergilloma subsequently forming, okay? So this rare fruiting body at 37 degrees, this is a high-yield image. And at 25 degrees, we get the 45-degree branched septate hyphae, okay? So 25 degrees Celsius, we get 45-degree acute angle branched septate hyphae, high-yield for aspergillus. Uh, of course, 90 degrees is mucormycosis, okay? So... Uh, Right angles for septate hyphae, uh, branch septate hyphae, mucormycosis, 45 degrees, aspergilloma, or aspergillus, okay? So uh, another detail you could know for aspergillus is ABPA, acute bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. So if the US simile gives you ABPA, they're going to give you an, uh, an asthma-like presentation in someone who has hypersensitivity to aspergillus skin antigen. That is what they'll tell you. They'll be very explicit about it. Uh, it'll be an easy diagnosis, okay? When they ask you something weird, such as ABPA, they're gonna give you like the most easy textbook example, so don't worry. But those are pretty much the details you need to know for aspergillus for USMLE. Just aspergilloma likes to occupy uh, previous cavitary lesions of the lungs, such as abscess or history of TB, and also can cause ABPA, all right? Um, a lot I can talk about, as I said, but I'm just going to move forward. Looking at the uh, other answer choices, abscidia atrospora. So abscidia is one of the types of mucormycosis. So mucormycosis is a broad uh, category of fungus that can refer to mucor, abscidia, rhizopus. These are bread mold and classically like to infect the paranasal sinuses in immunocompromised patients who also have diabetes. There's a tropism supposedly for glycosylated endothelial cells, okay? Can never pigeonhole things. If you get a paranasal infection in a diabetic and they literally show you a rare fruiting body, you have to use your fucking head, okay? It's going to be aspergillus. U.S. is not going to try to trick you like that. Uh, this isn't QBank, okay? So in QBank, they'll be like, ha ha, gotcha. Uh, USMLE is not going to do that. So if they want uh, abscidia, they will give you either 90 degree uh, branch septate hyphae, okay? Uh, as opposed to the 45 degrees we said was uh, aspergillus. So they'll give you 90 degrees for abscidia and they'll tell you that uh, the patient might be diabetic, that it, uh, it's a paranasal sinus infection. That's pretty much it for choice A, okay? Choice B, Actinomyces israeli. This is not even a fungus. This is a gram-positive filamentous rod, or also known as gram-positive beaded filament. And Actinomyces and Nicardia are the two genuses of uh, gram-positive filamentous rods you need to know for USMLE. 
Uh, tenomyces causes yellow sulfur granules uh, as just one descriptor. That's high yield. And it likes to cause draining sinus tracts in the uh, uh, buccal mucosa. Okay. So actinomyces um, is anaerobic and it's not acid fast. Nocardia is weakly acid fast and aerobic. Okay. I don't want to get too off topic. I could talk a lot about these organisms. Uh, I just want to stay focused here. But actinomyces, if because it's a gram positive filamentous rod, if they give, ever gave you an image, it would look like you are, it would appear as though you're looking at both a bacterium and a fungus at the same time. You'd be like, wait, what am I, what am I seeing here? And you'd see lots of dots, which are your bacteria. And then you'd see also hyphae at the same time. And you'd be like, I don't know which one I'm looking at. That tells you you're looking at actinomyces or nicardia, okay? Um, Aspergillus fumigatus, of course, that's our answer here. Choice D, blastomyces, SPP. So the reason I wrote SPP species as opposed to dermatitides or dermatitidis, however the fuck you pronounce it, uh, for the species name, is because if I wrote uh, dermatitidis, then it would be sort of obvious that it's wrong because you'd say, well... This isn't really a skin infection. Blastomyces can be disseminated by all means. Uh, but once again, just improvising when I wrote this question, I decided to put SPP. But you should be aware that dermatitis or dermatitidis uh, is the species. So blastomyces, you get from wood, classically, like wooded areas. And broad-based budding is a descriptor that I've seen, OK? Um, I yes, so I've seen an NBME question where they they give you a big fucking paragraph, and then the last line they say there's broad based budding, and that's going to be blastomyces. Okay, so um, Candida albicans is you know obviously high yield name, so they want you to know for imaging that you have pseudohyphae at twenty five degrees Celsius, and at thirty seven degrees Celsius you have single budding yeast. And the image will be green immunofluorescence, and you're going to see just single budding yeast. Okay, so candida, uh, so much we can talk about, but candida uh, classically associated with uh, patients who are on broad spectrum antibiotics. So uh, parenteral nutrition as well. If they tell you someone's been on antibiotics for six weeks for endocarditis, and then they've got some sort of skin infection or the blood, there's culturing of uh, pseudohyphae or single budding yeast, then you know that's candida. Also, uh, diabetes increased risk. Um, and yeah, so insulin resistance and diabetes increased risk for candida. Uh, a lot I can talk about. Um, and also uh, yeast infections like genital, uh, uh, thick cottage cheese white discharge and erythema, okay? So just moving on, histoplasma capsulatum. Uh, histoplasma is going to be very small, okay? About the size of an RBC or smaller than an RBC. So histoplasma, very tiny. And uh, this is classically uh, Ohio, Mississippi River Valley. They like the, uh, the US Millie can say uh, patient uh, spends a lot of time around pigeons, like a guy who works at a plastics factory. And he, on his lunch break, he goes, sits in a park where there's lots of pigeons. That's histoplasma. They can say spelunking in caves. That's also histoplasma. And histoplasma likes to, if the patient is immunocompromised, disseminate to uh, the adrenal glands, okay? And it can cause uh, adrenal crisis, similar to what miliary TB can do. So uh, that's histoplasma, okay? Uh, we chatted a little bit about these organisms rather than giving a very long presentation, but um, your take home is that this is a rare fruiting body, which we see 37 degrees Celsius for Aspergillus, 25 degrees Celsius, we see 45 degree branch septate hyphae. Don't confuse with the 90 degrees, uh, the 90 degree angles for the hyphae that we see with mucor. And Aspergillus likes to occupy uh, previous cavitary lesions, of the lung, whether TB or abscess and can also cause ABPA, acute bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, which will be an asthma-like presentation in someone who has hypersensitivity to aspergillus skin antigen. Okay, that's it. Uh, more concise of a, 
a talking point here. Obviously going to make more clips. So that's it.